This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Chris Raygun. Hello. That's right. <laughs> Hello. Um, I we're not talking about Ultimate Halo. I'm sorry I had that up in the beginning, but um, we're talking about Chris Raygun. So tell everybody about your channel real quick, since we're going to be spending this whole video on essentially you and your channel. Hey. So yeah, I make. Uh... What do I make? I, I don't even really know these days. I make video game videos. I make uh, current events videos. I do like some uh, political stuff sometimes. I do current events, um, some comedy, some music, uh, just kind of whatever I feel like it. I like to think it's relatively highly edited compared to a lot <laughs> of the stuff that uh, exists. Uh, whether or not that's wise is, is a completely different thing. It takes so long to edit like a video like that, like any of these, really. And if you're looking for another, you know, podcast that's, you know, as good or better than the Krillcast, you know, check out his Snarkcast, or <laughs> Snarkcast, Snark Tank, and yeah. his Sacred Symbols, which uh, apparently fly under the radar for a lot of people. Go check those out. Yeah, man. I do podcasts every week, and everybody's like, where, 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 what are you doing, Chris? You're not working on anything. It's like, I swear to God, dude. <laughs> you knew. Yeah. So, Chris... But, uh, Chris, we've been watching your content a long time. I gotta say, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, Will started when you were doing the Halo stuff. Um, I was probably a little after the Halo stuff, but I went back and watched a lot of that when I started watching your videos. So, um, big fans oh of the God. channel, what you do, you, it's pretty awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, the Halo there's... stuff. That was the Halo stuff back when like the Master Chief Collection was broken, and I was just making a video about how broken it was every yeah. like day. <laughs> <laughs> every like day, I was like, it's broken still. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my god, I can't even remember doing that. It's been so long. It feels like an eternity ago, especially just how like different everything is now. Just ba like, even just like in the in the way, like content feels and like the way that mm -hmm. uh, people talk about things. Like 2016, 2015, 2014 feels like forever feels ago. Like an eternity ago. <laughs> I have to say, of your recent videos, my favorite one that you you did recently. Um, I, I love your slow cut to Sam Smith crying and you're singing the. <laughs> <laughs> you're singing your parody of uh, I can never remember the name of the song but it played in all the dog commercials on the, on the TV for a long period of time you know all the yeah. um, I can, I can the arms, yeah the arms, yeah exactly the exactly yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I was pretty happy with it that was honestly the only reason I made that video because I had like honestly like whenever I make a video it's usually because I, I think of like one thing that I think would be funny but I know I couldn't post independently because YouTube requires long form content to be successful Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was like, all right, this is a good joke. How do I make a video that would allow me to do this? <laughs> and to be fair, that, uh, that that video is just... I've watched it at least three times. I I, uh, I absolutely love that clip with the Sam Smith that you're saying. That. I was like, dude, he needs to do, like, the full song as a parody somehow. <laughs> I would, but I, I'd, get just, I'd get destroyed on, uh, <laughs> yeah. on copyright. Probably. Um, well, why don't you start with that first question? All right. All right, so first question... Uh, what inspired the creation of your YouTube channel? Oh shit! This is going this is going way, <laughs> way back. Because if you go to the about page on my thing, it says like, I I it should say 2007 was when I started this freaking thing. Yep. So it, it that was you talk about 2014, 2015 being a long time ago. 2007, <laughs> like I was like I don't even know, I was like 11 or 12 or something, or like or maybe actually no, maybe I was 13 or 14, something like that. But I was like some kid and I was like, I wanted to do film. Uh, I wanted to do filmmaking and this new site was out. It's funny because like when I joined YouTube in 2007, I thought, oh man, I'm way too late to start this. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you know, Machinima was already like huge and like Smosh was like exploding back then. And mm -hmm. I was like, it's, you know, it's, it's two years after the site. Like, ah, you know, I'm probably way too late. I probably missed the boat on this. <laughs> Uh, because back then sites would just come and go like you had like Friendster and fucking, uh, oh you know, MySpace and then mm -hmm. they, at the time, every, every, yeah, all these, all these, so many sites just uh, showed up and died I immediately, uh, that the paradigm that was expected was just like, oh, the site would die and then something else would take its place. And, uh, it's kind of amazing actually that Facebook, YouTube and Twitter are all still around and mm -hmm. as popular as they are given like you know how things were for so many years prior but yeah i just i just found this site and a lot of my friends were on it and they were like they were just making videos just for us basically just for our friend group and mm -hmm. just fucking around 
one of my favorite videos, a friend of mine printed out another friend's face and, <laughs> and just wore it and just was just like making fun of him. It was, kind of, it was such a fun platform to just dick around on. And I just wanted to do film stuff. And I knew that I, you know, I was a child. I didn't have like a budget. Uh, I didn't have like equipment or anything. Uh, but I knew that I could edit and I knew that I could use like Halo 3 theater mode to just sort of mm -hmm. fuck around and make stuff. And those were like some of the earliest videos. They're terrible. They're so, they're gone. They're, <laughs> they're eviscerated uh, from the internet. But that was kind of how I started. And it wasn't really supposed to take off, really. I was just sort of doing it to just make stuff that my friends could laugh at and just sort mm -hmm. of have fun with. Um, and it stayed like that for a pretty long time where I was just doing whatever. Uh, I did like covers of like Rise Against songs and like a bunch of a bunch of other covers that mm -hmm. uh, weren't weren't as homogenized. Uh, I did some like news update. Some of the earliest Halo videos I have were actually covering the Halo Reach leaks, where I was like, "Oh, this looks real," <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, uh, oh my god, what is this? This is your glasses oh, off playlist. God. Oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> yeah, so, I just like, like to put something up in the background while we're talking. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to distract I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's, it's pretty good gameplay, honestly. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's – the reason I started was really just – was really just – I was just a kid. And just I was having fun on this new social media site. I didn't start taking it really seriously until, like, 2014 where I was like, oh, uh, I went to school and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money going to like taking film classes and I, I just learned a bunch of stuff that I had learned on the internet already. So it was like a huge waste and I was like furious. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to try and get a job. And I tried to get a job and I couldn't get one because you need experience <laughs> uh, for everything. And I just remember being like, I don't know what to do here. But I had this channel that had like amassed, I think at the time, about... 600 subscribers and i was like well that's not nothing uh mm -hmm. i could probably grow that into something if i just kept doing it and it worked <laughs> <laughs> it's weird like because that's that's some that's one of the things you're like it's just a complete hail mary mm -hmm. you know you're just like <laughs> the fact that it happened the fact that it worked out at all is is, is mind-blowing well it makes no sense to me yeah. to be fair <laughs> to grow something on youtube the personality of the creator definitely comes into the yeah, equation, it definitely is. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. you know, to hit six hundred and what are you at six hundred forty-four thousand now? Um, yeah, you know, your personality obviously has sold your content to six hundred plus thousand people. So mm -hmm. that says something about you as a person, I think. Yeah, it's insane. It's frustrating though because I know that my channel is like like shadow banned in some ways so it's like <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of frustrating knowing that like ah oh man it could be could be huge but like uh the fact that it's as big as it is is like not lost on me and just like i'm super appreciative of it especially because like a lot of the personality that's in the videos is just like I, that's not really like how i act all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. like I, i'd say that's probably me at like a party when i'm like really hyped but like okay but like you know, it was it's just a fun little avenue for me to just uh, express uh, a side of myself that really isn't super. This is, I would say, like my normal tone of voice, you know, where it's just kind of mm -hmm. I'm a lot more relaxed. Well, you gotta <laughs> sell like you gotta sell like the 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 biggest version of you, is, right? Like when you're on mm -hmm. YouTube, it's it's so hard to sell yourself on like your normal day to day. I, I know that some people can do that. But it is really hard to grow a channel in the beginning if you're not selling the biggest parts of yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and yes, the yeah. animation that you show in your videos is very humorous and it's it comes entertaining. Across. Yeah, that, exactly. that, yeah, that part is not exaggerated. I am I am animated, but, <laughs> but, but it's it's it, you know, it's it's just wild that it, it, it took off and that it worked because it, it really is just something that I didn't anticipate. It wasn't something that I tried to do immediately. So the fact that it I was able to grow it, I feel pretty happy I, I also acknowledge that i was pretty lucky because i had access to like editing equipment when i was like like i could edit since i was like nine like because i was working with like uh windows movie maker at the time and like yep. i would even do, do these like <laughs> i would even do these tricks where it's like in windows movie maker back in the day you could only have like one video track and one audio track right and what i would do is like i would edit one section of the audio track and then export it and then like and then that would be 
that would give me another audio track. So all my videos looked like compressed as shit, but they were like well made. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I had a lot of practice at a pretty young age. So um, I've revealed this before, but I'll, I'll just tell you real quick, just because we're having this conversation. I had a channel back when you you started, no, like when you first had your channel, was seven time frame. But what we did wrong, and it was significantly wrong because we didn't know this it was going to happen later. Um, we put like, you know, straight up professional music in our videos and that bit us so hard when copyright really started hitting mm -hmm. YouTube um, because we did jackass style videos. Like we, we were trying to be the YouTube, like the jackass of the YouTube community, you know, like the guys in the porta potty doing crazy stuff. Well, we were just like a much more condensed, much smaller version of that, you know, no professional editing whatsoever. And yeah. the using, the channel blew up pretty quick, and then all of a sudden, as soon as the copyright system got implemented, the channel just went zoop, and it was gone. <laughs> like, we got so many DMCA takedowns, that channel has been obliterated. <laughs> yeah, I I was kind of stupid with that stuff, too. But I also, I still do that. Like, I, I genuinely don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I, I will, I'll put all sorts of copyrighted shit in my stuff. Because I just, I expect... I expect a lot of my stuff to be demonetized and taken down anyway, mm -hmm. or like, uh, or at least okay. hit in that regard. So it's like, you know what? Uh, if I know I'm gonna get dinged, I might as well just like make what I want to make and not be concerned with all the bullshit. So yeah. I just sort of just do it, and I, I hide it pretty well because I usually like have it underneath a lot of speech, mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't really ding the ding the system. I, I don't know, man. Okay. Like it, that stuff <laughs> is just. YouTube, YouTube has always had a problem with copyright, honestly. Like, even back in 2007, 2008, like, you had, like, Warner... WMG was, like, the group that was going after everybody at the time. Oh, yeah. And then, like, mm -hmm. later on in 2011, that was, like, Viacom's time to shine as, like, the new <laughs> the new great Hitler of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was just, like, you just couldn't get away from it. And, it's, and it gets to a point where you're just like, ah, fuck it then. Whatever. Um. <laughs> hey, we did actually beat, uh, beat out Disney with our Little Mermaid parody. Um, they actually... <laughs> They actually released our uh, our copyright claim on our yeah video. my actually my my I had a Little Mermaid parody too that that didn't actually get uh, didn't get dinged for whatever reason that 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 movie for some reason is just not in the database I guess but oh, we did initially I just had to fight it and we won but mm -hmm. like um, a recent example was like I did I did a video about the alien like the Area Fifty One thing mm -hmm. okay. and uh, I had this whole like stupid thing where it was like oh it was like an alien invasion that'd be kind of fun if i just ended it with like some crazy like nonsense and just never explain it or never address it <laughs> <laughs> and uh i used um ramstein uh this this ramstein song i think it, it i think it's ickville it's they're like a german yeah i know what ramstein uh, is mm. so, it's, so it's like the names <laughs> are kind of hard but they uh and it was in the trailer for like the new Destroy All Humans remake. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah. and it just fits so perfectly with like uh, alien type vibe. And I was just like, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I'm just gonna use this. <laughs> I, was like, I, don't, I don't care. So how would you describe? Uh, give it, give we're back on spacefaring things again. How would you describe your relationship with the Halo franchise after all these years? Um, I I think it's pretty. Um, intrinsic to who i am at this point it's like this this series is like ingrained in me in, in a way that like very few things are to the point where it's it's altered my career it had it had everything to do with like who my friends are like the people that are still in my life or in my life because of this game and just uh i, I it's impossible to divorce this game from me because i feel like i, I just wouldn't even know who i would really be without it um, it shaped a lot of my des opinions on design, and it it, it uh, inspired me heavily early on to want to make games because just how good the overall experience was. And I was just like, wouldn't it be cool to just make something like this? Um, it's you know, I've been I've been th here through all of it. You know, I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was there with uh, you know Spartan Ops and like all that crap and Halo 4 being like a mess and Halo 5 being an even bigger mess. I was there with the I Love Bees campaign and just, and it's just been such a wild ride. And as, as much as like, I feel like things are strained lately, I don't think I could ever pass up the curiosity of just seeing what the hell is going to be next. You know, I think yeah. I'm always going to have mm -hmm. that bit of curiosity because I'm always going to have like some shred of hope that, um, I, I mean, obviously like nothing is going to, 
capture the same nostalgia that you have, you know? Right. Like, so nothing is going to be as impressive as Halo 3 because just, like, that game's existence and, like, the time it came out and the age that you are when you experience it has everything to do with how good... Um, has everything to do with how good that, that shit is. And, um, you know, I think... Uh, as long as it's true to what I think makes the game unique and stand out, then I'll 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 be all about it. But I'm definitely going to be curious, regardless. Now your Even channel a strained my relationship has been with it. Your your channel name, Chris Raygun, comes from the love of Halo, correct? Just... It, uh, honestly, it, it, it there's no reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there is literally no good reason. Uh, I. <laughs> Back on YouTube, I had no idea. Like, I was a kid, you know? I didn't understand, like, branding or, like, or, <laughs> or, or, or brand recognition or any of that shit. I was just making shit for my friends. And I would change my name constantly uh, just because I just didn't care. It was like a screen name, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you, people change their names on Twitter all the time or change their names on Facebook. That's kind of how I treated YouTube because YouTube at, at the time was a social media site from, from my eyes. And it hadn't mm -hmm. stopped being that for a long time. So I was like... For a while, it was just my full name. Then I just shortened it to Chris Ray, but I thought that that looked really weird. Uh, and I didn't want to use my last name just because it was just, I don't know, it, it's unnecessary information. It's a bit too out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also long and not very <laughs> pleasant to say. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right, well. Um, and I was just trying to think of things that I could put after it. And gun was like literally the only thing that made sense. <laughs> like... There's there's literally nothing that you could follow Ray with that would make sense in any other context except for that, <laughs> uh, and it just so happened to work kind of well because like it it's it speaks to kind of like some level of abrasiveness th that the channel has and or used to have. <laughs> uh, I thought it fit kind of well for what it was, even if it was kind of and it was also just completely unintentional. Like I changed it to that, and then the channel exploded. So I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> So this is me now, I guess. <laughs> and I was fine with it because it could have been way worse. I find that if you were to change your name at this point, like it would just throw people off, you know, like you'd be like, yeah, oh. yeah there'd be no reason to do it. <laughs> you know, and once you get that branding and you get the following, it that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So if you just accidentally fell into that name, it is like a really like it rolls right off the tongue, you know, or Chris Ray. Yeah, it does. Like, OK. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's funny, though, because like I, I, I used to make a lot of uh, political videos and they used to they used to be like kind of like poking fun at like um like uh super super like ultra liberal stuff like not like uh like i would say i'm a pretty liberal person i would say i'm even like a pretty progressive person but like you, you know you're easy to make fun of kind of stuff like people mm. like uh screaming at like a <laughs> at like a a teacher in the middle of a campus for no good reason and just like the the easy targets because they're just mm. kind of fun to make fun of and just fun to mess with um, and at the time, everybody thought it was like, is his name Reagan? Like Reagan? Because he's a Reagan conservative. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dear God, no. <laughs> it's not even insane. spelled right for you to be. Yeah, that's a stretch. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I remember seeing it a lot and I was like, what? I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind that that was even something that didn't even cross my mind that that's what it would sound like when people would say it. Mm -hmm. If you say you know it too I mean? fast, maybe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 Chris Reagan. Like a All weird right. emphasis. I think this is a good time for Will to ask the next question. Yeah. Uh, so, what's your favorite type of content to to produce on YouTube? Um, I like doing uh, current events recaps, but I do also it. They're just so stressful to make because it's just like trying to find something that is both ridiculous enough to have fun with, but also contentious enough to be interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like a really difficult line to cross because I don't really want to. I never want to make a video that's like uh, super serious. I hate didactic videos, especially when they're like political in nature, because like realistically, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, I don't know. What, <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, I, like I, I'm not the president. Like, I don't know what the president knows. I don't know. Like, I have my beliefs and my opinions uh, and I'll speak out about them when it's I find it find it necessary to do so. But it's also mm -hmm. like, um it's also one of those things where it's like I, it feels disingenuous to tell other people that they should think the way I f the way I think, uh, not having a background in political science or not having any like real uh, exposure to that 
environment other than just making videos occasionally laughing at people. Um, <laughs> and there are a lot of people who like were kind of um, associated with my channel who would do, who went down that route and they were like very very didactic and very much like this is a uh, very very self serious. Mm -hmm. And it was always something that I really hated uh, about pretty much any any kind of content when it's when it's super self serious and there's no hint of enjoyment in it then like i don't think that you're enjoying making the video and mm -hmm. i and i'm not enjoying that you don't enjoy it uh, i feel like enjoyment is like can can be contagious and i think mm -hmm. when you do a, a video on something that's vaguely serious and you do it with a tone of irreverence and do it with a tone of just kind of having fun mm -hmm. i think i think that leads to a lot more uh, of an engaging kind of video, and I think that's a lot more fun for the viewer to watch because they know that the person making yeah, it is having fun. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. The comedy versus lecture, right? Yeah, like nobody wants to be lectured. I, I, no. I didn't even like... I, I went to school to, to be lectured, and I didn't like... <laughs> so, the thought, so the thought that I would like seek out lectures on purpose, unless it's like stuff that I'm like genuinely interested in and, and it's coming from people who are like, uh, genuinely professionals in that field. Like, I, like I, I watched a ton of like uh, GDC conferences uh, yeah. where like people at Bungie were talking about like, oh, here's the reason why we have a free cursor in Destiny, and like here are all the like different design decisions that went into that, and here's here's why this works the way it does. And hearing that from like professionals in that field is like super interesting. But I'm not gonna mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and listen to like, uh, you know, uh, Warhorse four sixty forty six rant about like. <laughs> whether or not capitalism is a destructive force or, or whether or not like uh, mm -hmm. or whether or not um, you know uh, Ronald Reagan did whatever you know right like it's just I, I just don't I, I find it really self serious and it, it's just unappealing to me um, so like walking that line is like kind of difficult recently I've had a lot of fun making video game stuff whether it's like podcasts about video games or like the, I think doing the PlayStation show has really helped a lot. I think I did two videos this year. Uh, I don't even know if it was this year. The time is so dilated in my head now. But, <laughs> like, I did a video on Wolfenstein, and I did a video on uh, uh, Dreams. Oh, Dreams is cool. I had a cool. lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with those videos because it was, I care a lot about video games. It's like the thing that I, I think I'm... If I were to ever make a didactic video... It would definitely be about design because I feel like I, I know a lot about it, having s spent so much time mm -hmm. like reading and, and just studying and like listening to people who are really good at it. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun just messing around with with video game stuff. And I'm actually working on a huge, a huge Halo video right now. That's yeah. like, yeah, a h highly mm. edited kind of analysis on you know sandbox and enhanced mobility design and like and all and map design and weapon design and how how decisions affect one another and how like decisions that affect one part of the sandbox kind of mm -hmm. sprawl out and affect everything else i think it's like super well argued i'm really proud of it um <laughs> it's very well composed i i i i think it's good i hope it's good but, do you ever uh, watch like fabin then i've seen a little bit of fabin yeah I know. I know. Luke really, uh, really, really likes Favin's arguments on gameplay and stuff. He's said as much, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be interested okay. to see your version of, of. You're saying it's like a ultimate analysis, not ultimate. Uh, that's ultimate Halo, right? But a, a Chris Reagan <laughs> analysis of like the sandbox elements of one decision on on top of the next decision, kind of a thing. Yeah, just just sort of why, just sort of why Halo stands out and like the elements of it that make it fun and. Uh, how modern decisions have kind of undermined that. And specifically, um, like, I, I don't like just kind of saying things and not showing. So mm -hmm. it's it's like every every second of that video is specifically edited to, to illustrate what I'm talking about. And I think mm -hmm. that kind of makes it like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a definitive kind of video for this specific topic, and I'm I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy with it. I don't know if it's necessarily all that funny, uh, <laughs> but like, uh, I'm I'm pretty happy about it. I'm pretty passionate about it, and I I, I don't know. I I hope that someone likes it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will definitely watch it. Um, yeah, I will definitely. say this: 
Will and I have probably reviewed over 100 to 150 channels since we've been doing YouTube. And that's been one of our biggest complaints about people who just show gameplay and talk about things that are irrelevant to what's on the screen. Yes. So just the fact that you did that on its own really amps up the video. Um, yeah. I'm very excited to see that. It's it's just 23 minutes of like everything having an example. And even when I get into like hypothetical like suggestions on how to evolve the game without destroying the sandbox elements, I, I literally went through the effort of just like drawing things up and like... Uh, hmm. Um, drawing up hypotheticals and like it's it's a huge fucking thing. It took me like I just finished yesterday and it took me like like a week of solid editing um, just to scour through all the clips and find the right exact like the exact things that I need for every point. Mm. It, was, it was a a huge bitch, but I think uh, <laughs> I think the quality is probably I, I'm very proud of it. As far as like I think you're it's really best. hyping it up now, so it sucks. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> and it's. It is. I don't think it's necessarily too hyped up, but I do think it's the best video game video that I've I've made. Okay. It's not a comedy video necessarily, but uh, I don't know. I don't think I necessarily need it to be. And if and when you release this video, it'll be the top pin comment on this video, so that people can oh. go find it since we're talking about it. Not not that they would they would probably go from your video to seeing no, this. No, 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 you know, no. We but... definitely have the higher viewership. So <laughs> <laughs> they'll go from this video to that one. Yeah, I've I will link get it at a... least. I've got to get like a sponsor thing approved for it first, but like it's it's done, and I'm I'm pumped about it. Awesome! I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, what is your relationship with music? Uh, I know that you did a lot of Rise Against and various covers over the years you've been on YouTube, but like, how would you describe your relationship with with music and and the platform in general with with regards to your music? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Man. Like, music was pretty. Uh, pretty important to me i think it was like a pretty huge political awakening for me it was like i think i think i found politics through music um so through like uh, rage and, and and rise and like all these other uh all these other bands at the time that were just really kind of talking about shit in a very uh clever way uh mm -hmm. in a very roundabout way but that still made like a, a pretty decent impact um I, I i i have a rise against tattoo on my on my shoulder <laughs> Uh, so music's pretty important. I, I early on, like I'd been playing guitar for like since I was like I think nine or ten. So I've been playing for a long time on and off, and I I I've, I've done some music, and some of it's okay. I, I I think some of it's, I think like a handful of songs that I've made are, are pretty good. I think there's like two that I'm really 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 proud of. But um, I still make music sometimes. I'm I'm working on a mix of quarantine songs right now, in my spare time. That's just uh. Just sort of di just dicking around with uh, logic and all sorts of uh, stuff like that. I wanted but... to show you something real quick. Oh, what do you... <laughs> um, a previous video, I, I know I tagged you on it, but you weren't following our Twitter account at the time, so you probably never saw it. Uh, on a previous video, we were actually recommending music, and like randomly at the end, I was like, oh yeah, Chris makes music, and we like pulled it up, and I was like, I recommend Chris's channel for <laughs> music. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what fucking what song could you have possibly chosen? I don't remember. Um, but you're in the title. This is Owl City and Chris Rica. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a gr Owl City. <laughs> That's so. Uh, I didn't recommend Owl City to be fair. That was Fletch. Fletch, rec Fletch recommended Owl City. I recommended a couple other things, and then I was like, oh yeah, Chris did the Rise Against covers forever ago, and they were really good. You should go check out the rest of his music. <laughs> It was like yeah, a one-off yeah. kind of thing at the end. I didn't know if you ever saw the video or not. I did see it. Yeah, I, I did see. It. I don't remember what song it was. I think I think you just linked to my stupid. I I uh, oh yeah, I showed like, in the arms of the angels. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, music's hugely hugely important to me. It is definitely more of like a kind of a side thing. Like whenever I sort of feel like it. It's I, I don't ever want to make it like a career or anything. Okay. Um, because quite frankly, I don't, I don't think I'm good enough to justify a music career. <laughs> like I have, I have fun making music and it sounds decent and it sounds fine, but like, I'm, I'm not trying to play shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did enough of that, like in high school and <laughs> all that nonsense. <laughs> so were you in like the band in your high school or did you just do like your own thing? I was in a band. Uh, I was in a few bands and, uh, I hated every single one of them. <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, every single band in high school is just like, I want to be like this. You know what I mean? Like, it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to sound like Disturbed. And I was like, why do you want to sound like Disturbed? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's just it's just so weird. And it's I don't know, like we I just was always forced to play music that I just didn't want to play. And then like every time I would find something that I liked, the lead singer would just be like, oh, I'll, I, oh I got an idea. And then he would just take it and just completely destroy it. <laughs> it's just like I remember this one this one thing he wanted to do like a. He wanted to do like um, uh, all he said was like I want to do like a song where there's like uh, it's it's like one uh, like a one round in, one round in the chamber kind of song. And I was like I don't know what that means. And I was like all right, <laughs> and I played some chord progression that I thought was pretty good, and he and he was like yes, now let's drown out all of the guitar of it and just keep the bass chords. And I was like what? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> Like, why did you have me do this? Why didn't you just play these chords on a keyboard? If you're just going to drown out all my garbage. I don't know. Like, it's, I, maybe I just don't work well with others. <laughs> but, like, I, I just, I, I really hated, like, just the band experience. Maybe I just had, like, a bad uh, group of people that I just didn't really care for. It was never my good friends who were, who were in the bands with me. It was always just, like, people who just, you know, I vaguely knew who also had an interest mm-hmm. in music. And they were always like really pompous theater people, um, <laughs> and it was just I don't know I, I I couldn't really get behind it. Um, so it's it really is just a side thing for me. I think the the, the thing that I would really love to do genuinely, and I, I know this isn't related to music at all, but uh, before the pandemic destroyed uh, everything, I was uh, I was working on like stand up, and I was going out and doing like uh, doing sets. And I did like three, and the first one was really really good. The second one was horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got bombed so bad, mm-hmm. and then the third one was uh, was pretty pretty okay again, uh, and I was like getting excited. I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I like this. This is uh, something that I could really see myself doing. And then like everybody had to stay home now because the world is ending. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm kind of bummed about that. But who who would you say you you look up to as a stand as, as a potential stand up comedian uh, in the future? Like if you were if you were to become famous and somebody's like, hey, Chris. Who is your inspiration? I, yeah, I, I don't want to be like... I, I, what I'm doing is really just kind of taking the persona that I've developed and kind of... Doing it live. Moving it, into a, doing, moving it into a live action environment and just like playing down the speed a little bit. Obviously, mm-hmm. because it's not hyper-edited. Uh, it's live. So it's just... I'm kind of messing around with like how I, how I want to do it, but... Obviously, like I think, like George Carlin was like huge. Mm-hmm. George Carlin was like the punk rock of comedians. Like he's just like he was just this dude who was like, "This is how the world is," and fuck you. And it was like <laughs> so great. And him and like uh, what a what a description. Him and uh, Norm Macdonald, uh, who is another weird, mm-hmm. just strange. I don't know if you know who Norm Macdonald is. I, I know do know like, who Norm Macdonald is. He's yeah. not necessarily like a huge like mainstream comedian nowadays, but like he's like one of the funniest people I've ever seen. Because just, I, I can't think of a single person who, who, uh, who just speaks in the way that he does, and who like is funny in the way that he is. It's just a very interesting human being. Um, but I'm honestly even just uh, inspired by like friends of mine, like p- people like uh, uh, Psyche Pebbles is like such a hysterical human being <laughs> that I just can't believe anybody is as funny as as he is. Um, but like uh, Dave Chappelle is like huge. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a lot of them. Larry David as like a writer, uh, obviously because mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't really. I, I've never seen him do stand up, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of. I'd say that I have like a pretty de- Mitch Hedberg. I have like a huge list of like people <laughs> that I really like. I'll listen to like over and over again. Did you um like early on in YouTube? Were you a fan of like Bo Burnham or not really? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I thought Bo Burnham was like really cool. I, I like mm. Bo Burnham a lot because he really does. He really is one of those dudes who like just kind of does what he wants. Like he'll he'll mm. like, hey, here's a stand up special that's like really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, why does this why does this work so well? Um, he might be one of the most but, unique ones, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bo Burnham is like if Dimitri Martin wasn't one note. is the best way that i could describe a burnham but yeah like there's there's so many i know i'm it's frustrating because i know i'm missing some because like anytime you think off the top of your head um you know you're always gonna forget something oh absolutely but but yeah definitely like bo uh bo's bo's an interesting person because he does a lot of introspective comedy and uh I don't know if anybody else could really do it the way he does. But somebody else uh, in that vein was like Tim Tim Minchin, 
who's this Australian uh, comedian who does like musical stuff that's also like very funny, but it's also depressing and like kind of heartwarming. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of what a mix. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's oh my god, what is this? Uh, it says how to YouTube advice from an idiot. So this must oh be like my god. old I stuff. I saw that and I had, I had a panic attack cuz I was like, "Oh my god, I swear to god that video is not public." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I would I would say that those are the main drives. Well, on a less serious tone, well, what's the next question? <laughs> All right, so uh switching topics completely. Uh what are you looking forward to the most uh, in Halo Infinite? Uh, the thing that I know I'm going to, the thing that I, I'm pretty confident I will like is, is the art style. Because okay. that was like a huge thing to me was when Halo's original art style is just so, so impactful to me. And I, I, I don't even really know why. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's nostalgia either. I do genuinely think that there's a quality to it that is kind of, um, objectively measurable in just how right everything looks in, mm-hmm. in Halo 3. Um, and in Halo 2, obviously to a lesser extent, but like I think even the art design in Halo 2 is like in, in pretty pretty fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just like the ruins of Delta Halo look like. I remember that was like my favorite low. I would replay Delta Halo all the time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's just such a cool looking space, like these ancient like temples and like this gondola. It was just mm-hmm. so cool. Um, and the fact when the Infinite trailer dropped, and it panned out from that vista with like the smoke going up and you got to see chief's helmet and it looked right mm-hmm. again it was just such a huge it was like the e3 announcement trailer this and one? it was just yeah that one it was at the end of it and it was just such an amazing i screamed actually like like a loud <laughs> like a loud <laughs> it was before this okay oh, sorry it was just a little but like uh, yeah right there this blew my this blew my mind when i saw it because I was, I was just so certain that we were stuck with this ugly style, yep. and that three four three is just kind of like, no, it's ours, and we, like, you know, this is the <laughs> way we want to make it, and that's what it felt like, especially after Halo Five and how like disappointing that narrative was. It just sort of felt like they were just sort of doing shit just because they could, mm-hmm. and um, I thought for sure that, oh man, I don't even know if I'm interested in the next Halo game because I just know it's just gonna look like a mess, and then this trailer came out and I was like, I cannot believe it looks right like everything about this trailer looks correct Mm -hmm. you know like even like there are some designs that i wasn't a fan of that are still around like the i i wasn't that huge on the warthog having like red uh gas cans on the outside but like it was always like minor stuff like the big thing was like the spartan armor and how uh and how it how it used to look so cool Mm -hmm. even just like the all the armor permutations in halo 5 that look disgusting (laughs) you know (laughs) It's just like so the much shark head and like the porpoise head and stuff. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and it's just so gross, and it's like it's such a shame because so much of Halo was like the way it looked, and just to see that, to see that they were listening, and just to see that, like even just this scene, just like looks, it looks like Halo. It looks like a next generation Halo game. It's just a yeah. marine, but it doesn't. He doesn't look like a Lego. Like, he, doesn't look, <laughs> like, he doesn't look like he's playing laser tag. This mm. looks like a dude. He's got pouches. He looks like he's a marine, and he looks yeah. like he's like. It just it, man. Just the tone of this is just so perfect, and I, I really hope that uh, the tone of it is as good as it's presented here. Because if mm-hmm. it is, then I think it, we could be in for something really great. Um, and that's that's probably the thing that I'm looking most forward to because it's 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 the only thing that I've seen so far that has that has instilled me with any sense of confidence is that the art is probably going to be uh, stellar again. It definitely seems that way. I can't wait to see the elites. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious, man. I'm genuinely like excited to see like what what, what everything looks like. Mm-hmm. Even honestly, even if things still look kind of dumb, like I'm just I'm just so happy that Master Chief looks as good as he does. Mm-hmm. Like they did they did everything right. Like I think they they got the bulk of Halo Four, which is like the bulk of Halo Four was like neat and like I, I understood it. Uh, it looked realistic and all that, but like part of me was like, ah, Halo isn't necessarily meant to be realistic Mm -hmm. um but like the fact that they married the bulk of the halo 4 design with the the style of halo 3's overall aesthetic in this trailer is just so exciting to me Mm -hmm. and the fact that he's got the little package numbers like the uh the 117 on his chest from the package yeah Yeah. it was just like i saw that and at first i didn't like it but like it kind of grew on me after a while i don't know what it is 
It would so, be cool if you could, if, if your like service number could be, uh, if you could customize your service number in multiplayer and it could be on your uh, chest. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a really sick idea. Mm -hmm. What would you say has got you the most nervous then going into Halo Infinite? What's one thing that like you're like, oh man, if this happens, I'm I'm right back out of it. Um, I don't think I'll ever be out of it necessarily, just because like I I'm excited to see the game look this good, but one thing that i'm concerned about is like i don't know how they're gonna do this story um especially with where we left off i just i don't know man this is supposed to be like a spiritual reboot um mm -hmm. so that part has me excited because that term specifically is associated with a lot of amazing resurgences especially lately like um uh god of war 2018 oh which yeah I, I just adored was like a, a a spiritual reboot of god of war and like you know, it was a continuation of the story still, but it was a uh, it was also like a, a a kind of re, uh, like a like a complete reimagining of like how this could be, and mm -hmm. um, similarly was uh, Doom Doom Four uh, in twenty sixteen, which yeah. was originally going to be Doom Four and it was supposed to be like a kind of like more of a continuation of Doom Three and then they were like ah you know what, let's just spiritually <laughs> reboot it let's just go back to the drawing board and make make the first game again but like better and bigger and like and they did it and it was amazing so if they mm. can pull off something i'm hoping that halo infinite is that game for the halo series i hope that yes. it is that it, the god of war i hope it, it's the doom 2016 um because i think it really has a lot of the telltale signs of being it because god of mm -hmm. war was in development for five years doom uh 2016 was in development for a really long time and people were really nervous about it um, people were nervous about God of War 2. People were nervous about this. And I hope that, like, if the universe rhymes at all, if it could just rhyme now, uh, that would be really, really great. Uh, so the story, I would say, is, like, probably, like, the biggest concern. But underneath that, I, I do worry about what the gameplay is going to be and whether or not they are going to kind of stick to their guns as far as enhanced mobility goes. Mm-hmm. Um, because I really do fundamentally think that if if Sprint is at all present, then we're not going to be getting the Halo game that we should be getting. I think we might get a really fantastic first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have actually no doubt about that. Like, Halo 5, oh. as, um, as frustrating as a lot of elements of it are, um, is a damn good first person shooter like i can't even argue that it's a bad shooter at all like the multiplayer is like really fun it's kinetic yeah, it's the fast. Multiplayer is good yep. um and even the campaign like as bad as the campaign was like the level design i thought was actually a step up from halo 4 um as far as like the spaces that you were flying through and like the, the one scene in halo 5 that I, I like was when you're running down the guardian and you're like kind of like mm -hmm. yeah, that was genuinely that was cool, cool. um but if I really do think if, if Sprint is there, it, it damages the fundamental core of like why Halo is so cool because I, well, I'll get what about it. like uh, Clamor or uh, like the jetpack. And, uh, I go into details about like those things in the, the big video that I'm working on, but okay. I, I do think in, in general, um, I, I just think it, it, it impacts design so much that, like, when you have it in, it's just going to make it not a Halo game. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm still excited because I fully expect it to be a good first-person shooter, but I, I, if I see Sprint, then I'll know that, like, okay, I can temper my expectations. I can kind of go into it with, like, okay, well, this is... We'll, we'll see what this is then. Uh, but if I get any hint that we've got some classic gameplay on the horizon, I'm going to be freaking out for months. <laughs> How would you mm -hmm. feel if they if they didn't include sprint in the campaign and they also had a no sprint competitive mode? Like I, would you be accepting of that or would you think that fragments the audience? I think it fragments the our, our audience. I think it complicates the sandbox to a degree that is like a little bit not it's not really as friendly as the sandbox could be uh if it's that if it's that granular with how you can mess with it. Ultimately, I, I just think Sprint should be a feature that you should be able to turn on in custom games rather than a feature that you should be able to turn off. Because the second something is intrinsic to the player, it impacts map design, it impacts weapon design, mm -hmm. it impacts the way enemy AI fight you, it impacts the power that vehicles and weapons can give you in a firefight. 
it, it just it's too it's just so it, it affects everything and mm -hmm. i you know like i said like i think it could still be a great game um and maybe it will be maybe it'll be yeah, maybe it'll have enhanced mobility and it'll be all the better for it. But I know that based on what I know about design and, and like how how we've seen it play out already twice now, I, mm -hmm. I just really do genuinely believe that what makes Halo stand out is the fact that it doesn't have all these things, you know? Especially a, now because every single FPS has those uh, advanced mobility. Yeah, um, except, except for the ones that stand out, mm -hmm. literally. Overwatch doesn't have it. Yeah. Uh, Valorant, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have it. Counter-Strike doesn't have it. All of these genuinely, like, well-revered or, like, exploding FPSs don't have it. Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal do not have it. Mm -hmm. the, the idea that, like, Sprint is necessary in a first-person shooter because it's everywhere is the exact reason why it isn't. No, I think I think uh, Hidden Experience would be very happy. Luke would be very happy to hear you say that. So, <laughs> uh, I've talked I've talked with Luke Luke several several times about that. <laughs> I actually 100 percent agree with what you're saying. I I have never liked Sprint in the Halo series. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It, yeah. it, it, it's like adding. It reminded me of when they added vehicles to Call of Duty, and <laughs> like they were just sort of in there, and it just sort of felt like a mess. And it's just like, what 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 is this? This is so clearly not designed for this. Uh, and that's and again, that's not saying it can't be fun, right? Like it's fun to like play Call of Duty game and get on a stupid little ATV. It's fun <laughs> in Halo Five to like sprint, dash, clamber, climb, mm -hmm. but it, it it also just kind of becomes not Halo. Um, and if I want not Halo, I have literally every other game to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You know, and then what I want is Halo. So give me the thing that I pay for. I got slightly confused there because I saw you get up from the thing and say, how do I still hear you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, well, I think it's a good time to ask the next question, but I think yeah. we know the answer already. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, so what is your favorite and least favorite mainline uh, Halo FPS? Uh, my favorite is uh, Spartan Assault. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, wait, what? There, I have different answers for this depending on what we're talking about. I think the story in Halo Two is probably like one of the best stories in uh, any any first person shooter, really, um, because it's just so fascinating the way they the way they looped that story in and the way they like develop that world without being a jarring a jarring change. The Arbiter is like probably like the best character in the series, honestly. Like in in my opinion, because he's just so well acted. Like Keith David is amazing, mm -hmm. and also just uh, just his story is just so. Um, it's it, Halo Two is the story of like an alien losing his religion, and the fact that there's a first person shooter about that is just insane. Like that's such, <laughs> that is such a cool mm -hmm. concept, and I don't think um, I don't think I've played anything like that uh, as far as like the per the first person shooter space goes. Mm -hmm. um, so story, I would say. Halo 2, and, and the rest, I would say Halo 3. Halo 3 is just so... Um, I know Hidden Xperia would, would love this, but it's, it, it, is, it is iconic. It is it's, <laughs> an iconic game, and everything about it... Every, I, I, there's so little flaw in, in, in Halo 3. The biggest flaw in Halo 3 is that the campaign isn't... Uh, the, the campaign won't donate millions of dollars to you personally. <laughs> and that is the biggest flaw. Like, it's just not as incredible as it could be, but mm -hmm. it's also still, like, such a fun ride. Like, the fight with the two scarabs on, on the Covenant level. Oh, my and, gosh, like, that's and awesome. Just, like, and, and f driving a, a chopper through the arc and, and, and just uh, Savo Highway and, like, all these levels are just, like, genuinely, like, the Warthog run at the end... It's such a good single player. Um, and the multiplayer is amazing. And like Forge is insane. And custom games is insane. And theater mode is groundbreaking and astounding that it's not in games anymore. Mm -hmm. It's been replaced by this weird photo mode thing now that exists in like so many games. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's like this is just worse theater mode with mm -hmm. more filters. You're making me want to just like cut the podcast and just like play Halo Three right now. <laughs> no, I've been thinking that this whole time. <laughs> I have, I've played, I have replayed Halo Three probably more than I've played anything, for sure. That's probably the doubt. same for me, honestly. I, I think I've got more hours in Halo Three 
than I have in some classes I took in college. <laughs> like, it's just, like, yeah. so many hours. <laughs> well, that's, that's definitely true for me. <laughs> now you gotta answer oh, worst. Wait, I didn't, oh, yeah, my least. Um, honestly, uh, Halo 4 is my least. I think Halo 4. Like, I know, I know it's popular to say 5, just because, like, there's a lot wrong with it. But I think Halo 5 does a lot more right than... Uh, Halo 4 does. Halo I 4 has. I agree with you. Yeah. Halo 4 has a really compelling story for a little bit. It, like, it's really good for, like, a little bit. And then mm. it gets really bad, and then it gets really, really, really great at the end. Um, <laughs> like, the, the very. The, the final, final moments of that game are really, really good. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I actually talked about this a lot with some friends of mine where it's like. The the characters that you start off as in Halo Four. Not only is it the 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 introduction to this terrible art style uh, that just sucks you out of things immediately. It's like, oh, I remember jumping onto that ship at the end of Halo Three. Why does it look nothing like that ship anymore? It's like it's just so weird. And um, right off the bat, the characters don't feel like the characters. And right off the bat, you feel like something is wrong. And it's like these. This doesn't sound like the people that I I've, I've been playing as for mm -hmm. like. A decade now and, and something's like really wrong and I realized what it was it wasn't necessarily that Master Chief was talking so much it was that it just happened too quickly you know what I mean like in God of War in God of War 2018 Kratos is like it's been several years so Kratos is definitely like mellowed out but he's mm -hmm. also still very recognizably Kratos and like at the end of that game you, you go through the journey and then like at the end of that game he's like a different person but it's like you've seen a believable shift in personality based on all the shit that you've done Mm -hmm. And in Halo 4, um, there's a character change in Master Chief and Cortana, but it's, but it's never really earned. Like, it never yeah. earns that character change. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree. So even though, like, the story is, like, mostly pretty great, I can't get it out of my head that, like, they're just expecting me to believe that these are the characters when it's so clearly not. Like, it would have made sense. It would have made a lot more sense for him to just talk more as the game went on and as the threat of losing Cortana became more and more real. Um mm -hmm rather than just sort of starting it out and then he just doesn't shut up. Um, so, you know, and, and that... Th the worst part of that game is, without a doubt, the librarian showing up and just, like... <laughs> yes. Like, just doing this weird, like, I've, I've sped your evolution tenfold! Yeah, and then nothing happens, though. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't impact the gameplay in any way. It doesn't, like, give you some new ability or, or anything. Not that I would want that, but, like, it, the fact that they show it in such a drastic way... And it's this this huge like Deus Ex Machina thing, that is just so poorly so poorly told and so poorly done, that it just like ruins the rest of the game for me. And on top of that, like the multiplayer isn't good. Like the forge was like destroyed and gutted, uh, and it just looks hideous. Um, the theater mode was broken. It had it had kill cams, it had perks and yeah. loadout. Everything about Halo Four is just is just such a huge misstep. And I, I, I kind of forgave a lot of it because it was like a, a beginning entry. Um, so like, all right, it's them finding their footing, whatever. And Halo 5 has definitely like the worst story as far as like what happens and like character interactions. The fact that like Master Chief and Arbiter don't say anything to each other is <laughs> such a waste. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think Halo 5 plays a lot more satisfyingly. I think the multiplayer has a lot of merit. I think mm -hmm. custom okay. games in that game, even though you don't have split screen, the custom game community in that game is insane. Uh, the Forge is probably the best Forge that has ever existed in any mm -hmm. game. It's hard, to, it's hard to use and it's like hard to wrap your <clears> mind around. But like the shit that is doable in, in Halo 5 Forge is genuinely like industry leading levels of impressive for customizability in, in any game. And the only reason people aren't talking about it is because the rest of the game suffers from so much. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> obviously like big team battle got screwed up and you know th there's really there's more of an emphasis on just random cards and and uh, microtransactions and arena combat that's a bit too sweaty for my taste but I do think it's an overall I do think it's a overall like a way better game than 4 is even despite it's lack of a mostly compelling uh, story mm -hmm. is how I feel about it in, lo in the long and short of it <laughs> <laughs> in kind of the same vein, uh, what was your favorite uh, soundtrack in the Halo series? It's it, this changes every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
because uh, I would say it bounces between 2 and ODST a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, because ODST has such a fascinating soundtrack for an FPS. Like, the fact that it's just this smooth jazz mm-hmm. kind of action guitar orchestra. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and, it all, and it all works so well. And the fact mm-hmm. that it does is, like, nothing short of just, like, masterpiece level. Like, every every soundtrack in in the Bungie trilogy is, is like phenomenal and I think even Halo 4 and Halo 5 has some have some pretty good moments too um but ODST I think I would if you had put if you had asked me this if you asked me this question on most days I feel like most days I would say Halo 3 ODST but I, okay. I use I use music from Halo 2 all the time in like videos and stuff like I use Peril a lot I use um uh um oh my god what's the it's not Earth City. Uh, oh my God! In Amberclad, I think is what it's called, where it's like, it's got like a very specific kind of like bass, uh, where it's like. Yeah, I know exactly the song you're talking about. Yeah. I know like, exactly what you're talking about too. <laughs> yeah, I use that one like a, a ton, like that and like Peril, and and Peril is just so funny, like it's such a whimsical, it's such a whimsical little song while you're just like throwing bullets into tiny alien children's faces. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> and the fact that they got like some really massive rock bands to record like custom like original music for Halo 2 is is just mm-hmm. insane. Like, you know, Breaking Benjamin even did a song on that soundtrack which still yeah. b- boggles my mind. That song is mm-hmm. in the game too. It's in right. the it's in the mausoleum of the Arbiter when you're fighting in it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's just insane. Like in- Incubus with a uh, they had this one song that, like, I remember being captivated early on, like, when I was playing Halo 2, and I, I knew nothing about it. I was, like, too young to understand what, anything that was happening. <laughs> and I was, like, playing it, and it was the scene where you're, like, the Arbiter, and you're flying the Banshee through the storm. Mm-hmm. And and this music comes on, and it's it's called Follow by uh, Incubus. And it's on the Halo 2 soundtrack, and it's just the, the craziest thing. Like, it just comes out of nowhere, and it's like, I would fly away from the fight just so I could hear it. Because this was like this was pre this was pre YouTube like you couldn't just download uh, you couldn't just really effectively download the song or like search it mm-hmm. so like that was the only way that I could listen to that song was like playing Halo Two and like flying away from the fight just to listen to music <laughs> so, it makes mm-hmm. me sound ancient and I'm only <laughs> yeah that's the same reason I kept replaying the bridge level I mean I love the <laughs> I love that that uh, guitar riff and you're going across mm-hmm. the bridge I'm just like oh my gosh this is epic. This is Halo oh, Two. Yeah, yes. yeah. Metropolis is a classic one. Names mm-hmm. escape me all the time. I just have a hard time with it sometimes. I replay that level every time I play that game. Like, oh, I yeah. go to that level first. It's one of the best. Like Metropolis and Delta Halo, and and even honestly, even Cairo Station is like a really fantastic mm-hmm. intro. Um, yeah, it is. Halo Two's levels are really great. It, it's kind of amazing too because Halo Two's levels are so linear, uh, mm-hmm. and the fact that they're able to feel as um, as open as they feel is is. A huge testament. Mm. I think it's a good Great. time for you to ask the next question, Will. Yeah. Uh, so, do you feel divided between the different content that you make on your channel? Channels. Channels. Dis- Channels. I, I suppose. I mean, every any bit of work that you put into something is work that you're not putting into something else. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, with podcasts, it's it's easy because I get to, like, with Sacred Symbols, I just get to come in and record, and that's all I do. And uh, now with Snark Tank, we have an editor, so I get to just pass that off. So it, it, the other the other channels are, you know, I, I don't necessarily feel divided. I do. It, it does get tricky trying to figure out, like, what the audience wants. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like, even the audience doesn't know what they want. Like, the audience can say, like, <laughs> the, the audience uh, in retail, the, the argument is, like, the customer is always right. And I feel like in... Uh, I feel like in content creation, it's it's the opposite. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the customer is like genuinely always wrong, because like they're always they'll always give you suggestions, and you know for a fact that like no one no one is gonna watch that. Like no, like oh man, just just make a video of uh, make a video of you talking about uh, Death Stranding, and it's like you're not gonna watch that. <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna watch it because I have nothing bad to say about it. Like if I hated it, like I would I would love to do that, but like I just don't. <laughs> so like. Because negative videos always get like a lot of, uh, they always get like a lot of traction because it, inherently because like mm-hmm. that breeds controversy and it's like interesting. Um, but like, I don't know, man. Like, 
I suppose there are things that um, that I wish I had a better handle on, just because I've been doing this for so long, and it begins to like bl- bleed together, and like you know, you don't really have a great idea of what your audience is when you're just doing whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if I just do whatever the hell I want, then the audience that I will have will be happy with anything, as long as I care about yeah. doing it. So I, yeah. I feel like it's like a win-win. I don't really care that much about subscriber numbers or like, uh, or like any of that really, as long as it's like engaged people. Like if people are like watching it and they're like commenting on it and like engaging with the content and like watching it again, mm-hmm. uh, that's the stuff that I care about. That's why I put so much time into editing stuff where it's like, because I want somebody like even though it's like current events. And like stuff that's like currently relevant, like in the now, I would mm-hmm. prefer it to be entertaining enough that even when it's not relevant and even when like these things aren't happening anymore, that you could go back and watch those videos and still have a pretty good time. Um, kind of like how comedy specials can air like 10 years later and they're still funny. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I tr- or just any any project, really. Like um, I, I don't want I don't want to make videos that are just stuck, like for example, or, or like there's... reliant on this video will always be relevant in my opinion you never say yeah. sorry video yeah, yeah i think it's good advice for everybody really yeah it's well it's exaggerated obviously it is like yeah <laughs> it is i mean every, everything on youtube you know that's like produced tends to be exaggerated so you know you you get a pass for being a little exaggerative yeah, yeah i remember <laughs> i remember everybody people flipped out about this one um <laughs> Because I, I, I don't know, they just didn't agree, I guess. Even though I was just saying, just like, don't be sorry. Th- 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 I'm literally just saying what my dad says all the time, which is, don't be sorry, just be better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's literally what the whole point of the video is. <laughs> but, like, it's, I don't know, everything's controversial to someone. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, for sure. I mean, I just, I, I've always taken that advice. Like, you know, if you say sorry, either mean it or be better, like you said, you know. So. Yeah, but, yeah. I can but, really, I can genuinely count, like, on my, in the last 10 years, I can count on, like, my hands the amount of times that i've apologized and how many times to sweeney no <laughs> oh never i've never, never apologized i never apologized how did you guys I, I guess this has probably been covered before but how did you guys meet uh oh um how do we uh, my roommate yeah uh we met in college actually i think it was like one of the i think the first year of college in like 2011 uh, and we were just both going to the same school. He was already like intertwined with my friends group, but he went to a different high school than me and all my friends. Mm-hmm. So like I, I'd seen him at like parties, and I I couldn't stand him. Um, <laughs> he was just so so annoying and so wrong all the time. Uh, <laughs> it it's just it was just such a it was a weird like I really did I really loathed him, like genuinely like genuine hatred. Like I wouldn't go to places if I knew he was going to be there because I was just like oh my god, this guy again. <laughs> And uh, when I moved out here um, with another roommate of mine, uh, he was also thinking of making the move. And I remember, like, he was rooming with us, and I was like, "Oh God, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to." Like, ge- I think genuinely, like, when some of the first appearances, when he would show up on my channel or on my second channel, I genuinely didn't like him. <laughs> like, I genu- like that was genuine, genuine disdain. Uh, but then, like, I don't know, you work together for a long time, and it's like, it, it, obviously, that, that kind of falls falls off. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> but I thought That's that kind of funny. Funny, little, funny little fact. Like, the very mm-hmm. first time, like, he has this thing that I actually I ruined his life because he, he does this thing in the first video that he's ever been in on my second channel where he goes, like, he walks up into my room, and he said he just walks up to me, like, while I'm recording, and I wasn't expecting him to show up because I didn't want him on the channel. <laughs> like... <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I was, I said, oh, this is, and I thought about using his real name, but I was like, oh, I don't want to give his real name in case he doesn't want that. So I was like, oh, this is Tom Sweeney. And then he just said, <laughs> and he says, hi, I'm Tom Sweeney and I hate the gays. Oh but he all, but he continues it by saying, he says, I hate the gays. You know, I, ha- I can't stand that they're just regular humans. <laughs> <laughs> but I cut it off <laughs> to make him sound like a complete asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it which it's, which channel is this on? I, it's, I, on it's on the Snark Tank uh, channel. Oh, Snark yeah. Tank. Okay. Oh, that's right, because yeah. that was rebranded when you guys made the podcast the main focus of the channel, right? Yeah, yeah. The Snark okay. Tank used to be just like a name for like a, a, a like a tank of garbage that I would just like <laughs> throw random stuff on. It's really, 
really early on. I think uh, probably... Uh, I'm going to just sort by old. Yeah, sort by old. But, um, yeah, I genuinely... I didn't like him in that video. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, maybe coming around to it, but, like, uh, I genuinely... I'm trying to remember where the hell it was. It's actually bothering me that I don't see it because I could have sworn. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's that one of uh, next to the kangaroo one. This one? The time tree yeah. hates. The, okay. Yeah, the one with. Uh, yeah, look at, the, look at just the disdain. <laughs> you look like so you're ready disgusting. to just. You look like you're ready to just, like, all right, I got you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I was recording my. Because I was working on a video and it was just, like, taking forever because, like, Premiere was being a complete waste of space. And, uh, and he just walks in like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> With no respect for personal boundaries. <laughs> he doesn't strike me as the type to have like personal boundaries. No, he definitely doesn't. I was just literally. <laughs> it's funny because you could tell like we're not friends yet. <laughs> it's really it's it's yeah it, it was complicated. <laughs> but like if, if we're friends now and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I cut it off. I totally just cut it off and made him look like a terrible person. <laughs> Is that a katana? Yeah, that, that was another roommate we used to have. He's he's insane. I, also, I he was he was the friend that I moved there with. Okay. Yeah, but that was a that was a trek. <laughs> it was a journey. I know we keep like switching kind of like where we're focused here because this is a you know we're not very focused I guess. That's um, fine. It doesn't matter. What you is think weird... I can, you think I have a? You think I'm focused? We're gonna have to put timestamps in this interview because otherwise people are gonna be like, "How did you get from here to here?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, what are some of your favorite Halo centric YouTube channels? Oh, um, Halo centric. <laughs> Why are you black? <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man, love that title. Um, what is? Uh, wait, what was the question again? I'm sorry. What are some of your favorite like Halo focused YouTube oh, uh, channels? Definitely, um, Hidden Xperia is is the one that I, I kind of always I go to. Uh, He's also a friend of mine, so I can laugh at him uh, <laughs> for being passionate about something that he cares about, like a nerd. Uh, but it's it's him. I would say late night gaming. Uh, I watch a decent amount of Favin. Um, you know, those those are, those are the main ones, and the Act Man, obviously. But Act Man's more generalized, obviously. Mm -hmm. He started like, out uh, as more Halo and kind of changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but like I would say those are the those are the main ones. Um, that's honestly like the main content that I watch. Like I don't even I don't even keep in I don't keep in touch with any other genre of thing. Mm -hmm. Like I, the only other thing I'll listen to is like I'll listen to My Name Is Bife because he does like really good like Destiny lore. But that's about it. That's just yeah, like, it, it, it that's is really just, good. Yeah. That's just because me and Sweeney have just been like engulfed with this stupid lore now. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, there's so much to it, and you have no idea. Like it's not in the game at all. So. Yeah, it's really good though. It's like some of the best lore I've ever heard genuinely bungie uh, like develops like massive lore in the background of games like i don't know if you've ever heard of the marathon trilogy they started with oh yeah no that was the first game that i played from them oh okay so you did actually play marathon you're one of the few people i've talked to that's actually played these games um yeah. i know a lot about the lore but i haven't played a lot of the games it's kind of weird i'm in that like a different scope of <laughs> they haven't uh they haven't aged super well like no. many of the games they are pretty much then. free to play on phones, though. If you go in the App Store, you can download them right to your mobile phone and play them directly on your mobile phone. That's insane. I didn't know that. I've got all three of them on my on my uh, iPhone XS Max, and they play just fine. So, <laughs> um, so I guess you just kind of led me to believe you don't question. you don't play you don't watch a lot of non Halo centric YouTube. Is what you're saying? Uh. I mean, uh, occasionally, like I, I watch like pretty much it sometimes, and they're like, uh, they do like a uh, movie commentary. Okay. Um. But yeah, I, 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 I my, my, my con, the stuff that I watch is so all over the place. <laughs> Did you, um, I sent you a video a while back. Uh, I don't know if you actually ever watched it. I know you probably get flooded with tons of messages on Twitter and whatnot, but did you ever watch this guy's channel that I sent you the video? Uh, which one? Tell me more. He had the televangelist video that I sent you. <laughs> Holy Ghost Fire. Holy oh, Ghost Fire. Oh, yeah. You, he, no, I did. you did actually watch it? <laughs> I did. What'd you think? Uh, it was something. <laughs> 
That was something. I actually don't. I barely remember it because I watched it like when you sent it. He like. Oh yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> it all comes back to me. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I. Uh, oh man. He. I, I will. The full disclosure. He's a friend of ours. He's been on our channel a few times, but um, I genuinely find his videos like he doesn't put them out very often he's like a mini internet historian almost like with an actual face to it um but i i i think you should watch some more of his videos if you enjoyed this one that's all i'm gonna say about that mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got such great stuff um but yeah he just did one on r slash world politics which has become like a uh what i'm gonna call a prawn sub on subreddit because uh, or on reddit because i don't know if you're on reddit that much but the mods did nothing, and the subreddit got completely destroyed. <laughs> and he details awesome. he details mm. all of it, and it's it's epic. <laughs> um, so you don't watch a whole lot of other non Halo. Is essentially what I, I would have thought I you'd mean, watch a little more, but well, I mean, you know, like it, it's it's not really like focused. It's just sort of whatever the hell I see that shit. Like I, I like yeah. skill ups. I like skill ups reviews. Um, uh, yeah, him. Like skill up is a really good reviewer. Um, uh, I've been watching that DB Geek dude go through Halo for the first time on occasion. He has these like, uh, uh, yeah, he has like playing Halo for the first time and like stuff like that. And it's kind of wholesome to see, even though I think a lot of it is kind of like made up. <laughs> uh, Datto, uh, I watch like Oni plays. Like I, I watch a lot of stuff, but it's none of it's like. Wait, Oni? Central, like right? he's pretending to be like from the perspective of Oni, or is this like his name? Oh no, o uh, Chris O'Neill, Oni and G. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay, I, I know what you're talking about now. I, I was thinking like Oni, O and I. I even spelled <laughs> it that way just now. So this yeah, guy right here. Okay. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other things, but like that, that's, I don't know. That's that's the stuff that I can think of off the top of my head. Cool. Okay. I guess maybe this would be a good time to insert a uh, question from a friend of ours. I'll just type in his channel real quick. Mm -hmm. Um. Carl Lucas, uh, he had a question for you. He wanted to know um, if you had an opportunity to like kind of go back and re restart your YouTube channel with a different perspective, um, would you change anything or wouldn't you even bother doing that? I I don't know. I think I would stick with games a little more. Like, because I did start with games and I, I, I did for a really long time. Uh, and, you know, I liked doing it. I don't really know why I stopped. I think I had the perception that it just wasn't... Uh, it just wasn't what people cared about, uh, which might have been true, but, like, it's kind of a rookie mistake to just do shit that <laughs> people care about that you don't, because then you're just stuck doing stuff that you don't care about, which is, mm -hmm. like, which is worse than failing, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I would just, like, more, I, I would focus more on video games, I would say. Uh, just do a little bit more content around that, because it's stuff that I'm actually genuinely knowledgeable on. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, that would be like the main thing, I think. So aside from Halo, Destiny, and Death Stranding, because I haven't been paying attention and keeping a list in my head, what <laughs> other game series do you enjoy? Oh my god. Um, what are, that's a big, that's a huge question. Okay, just pick, think, a, uh, pick a couple that you really like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think if I had to just pick trying to... I get like overwhelmed by the amount of shit, so I have to like look at I have to look at my like Steam library to just remember. I have like a, the memory of like an idiot, I swear to God. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I've I love the new Doom series. Okay. Uh, like the Doom and Doom Eternal are like phenomenal games. I love uh, Super Giant games. They make uh, it's not super massive, right? Yeah, Super Giant. They make like Bastion and uh, yeah, Bastion Fire looks and, good. and Transistor. Okay. Um, Obviously, like, the, the original Bioshock series is, like, incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing... I've, I've been into a lot of VR lately, so I've been doing, like, uh, Boneworks and... Uh, but, like, specifically Beat Sabers is incredible. <laughs> uh, like, genuinely. Like, it's it's such a such an amazing game. I'm, I'm huge on, like, Splinter Cell and, like, Metal Gear Solid because I, I just love stealth games, and uh, I feel like that's a genre that's really dead right now. Um, which is yeah. like a huge, a huge mm -hmm. shame. But yeah, a Crash Team Racing is like a phenomenal. Like, <laughs> is I the new I, version I really good? It genuinely is like incredible. Like it's, it's one of the best. The my biggest problem is like the microtransactions in it. They don't like affect 
gameplay. Uh, so it's not like egregious, but it just sort of makes things end up <sighs> just looks like a mess, you know, because like you just have all these skins and it's like, uh, this isn't really what the original game like obviously like I'm, a, I'm huge on art style. So like when I see something that just corrupts the art style of something, it just infuriates me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, from a gameplay perspective, it's genuinely uh, it's genuinely some of probably the best kart racer i think i've ever played um, oh, okay but but that but i already had a bias going in because i already thought like crash team racing the original was already like miles ahead of mario kart and miles ahead of any other kind of kart racer at the time just because of the the sensation of speed that that game gave you was just so far and beyond crash team racing is like the halo 2 of kart racers kind of because it's like it's broken in so many of the most interesting ways that it just makes it so competitive mm -hmm. and it just it's so satisfying <laughs> i listened to this by the way yeah <laughs> it's a mess we did a whole podcast where we were talking we've been talking about keith david a lot for no reason uh <laughs> because we just like keith david a lot mm -hmm. so we just called the most recent snark tank episode the keith david podcast episode 26 <laughs> keith david <laughs> you did and now I will like, say this. I, it's like the third it's like the third thing that comes up on YouTube now when you search his name, which is like <laughs> astounding. I honestly for a split second I was like, did they really get Keith David on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, that was for my main concern. A split second. I was like, no, no, there's no way. And I put it on, I was like, yep, nope. <laughs> they did not get Keith David on the podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah, Good lord. That, that would that would <laughs> I would end the show. Like I would stop. <laughs> Like, there's mm -hmm. no reason to continue after you've achieved that level of success. Mm -hmm. I, I ask Will, I've said that a couple times about some of the guests we've had on. Like, when you agreed to come on, I was like, Will, this is like it. We're done. Like, it's podcast <laughs> over. Chris was yeah. very, very excited. <laughs> a little bit. Just <laughs> a lot of it, really. But um, well, I, I appreciate that. Will, you got the last uh, question here? I think I think that's it, right? Yeah, it's kind of a question. It's like, is there anything that we've missed you want to discuss or any cool stories you want to talk about? Uh, oh, man, I don't know. That's, um, can't think of it. I feel like I've talked so much today. We've actually recorded two Snark Tanks today. Oh, my gosh. So this is, so this mm. is the third podcast that I'm doing today. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> because, like, uh, we're moving, so we're trying to get, like, ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I don't know. I'm all out of, I'm all out of talk, I feel like. I, I don't know what... <laughs> You know, like, I, I don't know, really. Good news for just, you is the next two videos, you don't have to talk as much if you don't want to. I and mean, they'll be much shorter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say definitely thank you for doing agreeing to do yes, this interview. Thank you. Because um, it, learning about the people that I've been watching on YouTube is one of the most fulfilling things we've done since we've started doing this podcast. It's yeah, really like cool. Like finding out they're actually real people is always yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, it's always jarring, right? It's, yeah. it's really strange. Like I, I, uh, I feel like I can actually have conversations with people on the platform now after doing all these. It's really, it's really fun. I, mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. So I, I want to just want to say thank you for agreeing to this, and we're gonna thank you again on Friday. So I'm, I'm gonna sound like a broken record by the time we get to Friday. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I appreciate it, man. That's that's really cool. I, I know exactly what that feels like because I, I, I remember just kind of sort of. Like when I started like getting into contact with people, it was just like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Well, um, I guess we can conclude this then with, uh, you know, definitely go subscribe youtube.com slash Chris Raygun. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't already, if, if somehow you're one of the 400 people or so people that is actually watching us and you're not watching Chris Raygun, you should go do that. I, I definitely <laughs> oh. think it's a good option. Yeah, so. it's clearly Chris's dummy account then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll upload soon, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, as always, I'm Chris. Uh, well, I'm Chris. And we will see you on next Coolcast. See you guys.